well, this is my final day and I'm not really a happy camper. Um, two things happened that have soured things a little bit for me. Um, last, uh, well, this morning, I got a knock on the door. I woke up early, just before five o'clock, and I just did the usual routine. I went out, had a coffee, turned the light on in the kitchen, um, the other light on there, and, uh, and watched uh, some YouTube uh, videos. That's it. And I get, and I get buzzed. I get a buzz, someone buzzes my door. It's my next door neighbour who I'd never seen before, and they're complaining about the noise. And I'm thinking, I'm just watching YouTube videos, and uh, I can't hear anything from other um, uh, apartments here, apart from some maybe moving furniture sounds and what have you from upstairs or downstairs at one stage. That's about it. I, I don't hear any sound from that guy, so I don't know what he's on about. I mean, I, I'm assuming that the insulation's okay. But he complained about just me watching a YouTube video with my door shut, uh, curtains that were drawn and everything. He also complained, this is the thing that made, made it really seem sus, he complained about the light coming from my place because I had the, the light on in the kitchen. It's a diffused window, it's not even clear, and it's not even facing his, his uh, apartment. So I don't know what the hell he's on about. I think he could be a nutcase, but you know, he's obviously tired and not thinking straight, but it just really pissed me off. I, I sort of said sorry to him, and I wish I hadn't because I didn't really do anything wrong. I was, wasn't wasn't playing loud music. I was I was just watching YouTube videos. That's it, and not not music videos, just just normal normal speech. And it wasn't going that loud, God. So that was uh, pretty annoying, and that that uh, pissed me off a bit. But I did the right thing, and I put my headphones on because I'm only here for another day, so uh, I don't want to make waves. So uh, I felt like I probably could do with, uh, I need to get a baguette at the uh, Carrefour Express and I also got a bottle of vino, a bottle of red. So I come back with, the, with those and I thought it'd be nice to have a cup of some soothing uh, red wine. And um, I, um, so what I do then, I, I, I open it up, of course, using the corkscrew as you, as you have to do over here. And I pull the cork, cork out, and the, there's a chip of glass on, on the lip. It's a, a hunk of glass came out of the lip, so there's no way I could drink that wine. Um, so, of course, I, I took it straight back to, to the place around the corner. I mean, it's only a, luckily, it's only about a, a, a minute walk to get there. I took it back to the girl, just expecting, as in Australia, if they saw that, they'd just exchange it. No, she refused to. And she, I think she even accused me of, of me doing it, that I, I could possibly have done, done it on purpose. I thought, Jesus. And it's not like it's the first time I've been there. And she's been really good up until that point. But uh, that attitude is just staggering, especially for an Australian, because if you if you have something like that happen in Australia, inevitably they will just replace it. They, there'll be no questions asked. Uh, it's not like I'm trying to scam the place. And that's the thing, it's weird. I'm, I've been there many times and bought the same wine. Uh, over a period of a month, and, and still yet, no, get, cutting me no slack whatsoever. Re totally, it's just point blank refusing to, to replace the bottle, and, and as I say, on top of that, accusing me of actually doing it, possibly doing it. She said, "There's no, is, oh, there's no evidence to say that it was actually the bottle itself." I mean, God, this is the sort of crap we got rid of in Australia years ago. It's just not worth the effort that the, the companies decide to say, well, you know, we're, we're not going to argue the case over something like that. Maybe it's a really expensive bottle, but it's not like a three, it's a 3.5 euro bottle of wine. So it's not much money for me, but it pisses me off because I was hoping to have a, a glass or two of wine um, today in the morning and then maybe just before I go to bed and with a, with a sedative so I get a good night's sleep. But, oh, I don't know. Anyway, as I say, just, just a couple of minor irritants that, that put a little bit of a dampener on today. I still might go and have a paella. I might cheer me up a little later. Um, but like I say, I'm a bit pissed off. I'm missing out on that, um, that wine. I was looking forward to that. But, uh, oh, well, there's plenty more wine in the world. And um, tomorrow's going to be a very big day. So I've got to be in good shape for that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my. I think the guy next door just came in for a bit of a whinge. It sounds like he might be a bit of a snowflake and just a hyper sensitive because you know some people are hyper sensitive to sound. But the thing that gets me is that this is a noisy alleyway. Anyway, I've told you this that I, I get noises from that that, that that business downstairs till about five a.m. from time to time, and not that unusual. It's it's a couple of times a week. So I don't know what he's on about. You know, I'm the least of the worries in this street. So yeah, I am a bit pissed off. Uh, and good thing that I'm actually, this is going to be my last night tonight. 
and I'll be out of here. Quite looking forward to getting out now. <laughs> so there you go. All right, but overall it's been a good experience coming here, but I am really looking forward to going to Saigon. That's, that's where uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun and, and none of these bullshit issues, hopefully. Okay, that's it. Having absolutely no luck getting a, um, a taxi, even along this really busy thoroughfare just uh, down where my apartment is. Uh, and I know I was near a bus stop, I thought it was a good place to basically, because they gave me those two options, and it worked out because the number 21 bus turned up, and uh, bus driver uh, was fine, got me up. Uh, he confirmed that uh, Santa Vista is there, uh, it was on this route. And he'll tell me when we get there, so that's fantastic. I sort of know what it looks like from uh, Street View, thank God, so I'll have a fair idea when we're getting close. But uh, yeah, just there's stacks of taxis during the day, but in peak hour, you, 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 you're gone. Luckily, I'm, uh, I'm going to get my taxi from, uh, from uh, the uh, station in Madrid at. Uh, just after midday, so hopefully it's, well, it's not peak hour, that's for sure, so it shouldn't be too bad. And there's a taxi rank on the floor. So, Panos de la Sorpea, It's not too crowded here, I guess most people aren't up at this hour in, uh, in Spain, especially my neurotic neighbour. What a, what a piece of work that guy is. Anyway, so. Uh, finally on my way and uh, hopefully that the train will be slightly early I'm just going to be a little bit more wiggle room. I feel so more, much more relieved when I get to the airport though that's what I'm really worried about if I can get that, make that connection I'll be fine. Uh, it's not as important as it's more important than the other connection which is uh, to get to Vietnam. If I miss that flight well I'll just buy another flight and uh, it's like get a Vietjet flight and just have to sleep over in, in Singapore and that's no big deal in, in the airport. Oh, actually, uh, well, I will be able to get inside, of course, but not in trains. Still, I could um, wait around in the waiting area, be a zombie, but what the hell. But that's my other option, I guess. But hopefully it won't come to that. There's a bit of time between those flights. It should be all right. But I uh, always think, I think of worst-case scenario, I guess, just in case, to be prepared for it. So, I didn't think I was ever going to take a bus here, but I ended up doing it. I think it was um, 1.25 euros. So it saved me around eight and a half euros to do it this way, so that's good. Uber went up. I looked at Uber. They were very competitive around 7 o'clock uh, at around uh, 7.9 euros. Mind you, it would be off my credit card, so there'd be all conversion charges and things added to uh, to the cost, which is a pay, much better to pay cash. But the um, yeah, but, it, but it, as it got to uh, eight o'clock, uh, the price had just jumped up to about thirteen ninety five, which is higher than what I paid for the taxi to get here, which is only ten, it's like less than ten. So oh yeah, it, it sort of depends on the time of day you use Uber. But I've got to say they've got advantages. Like they come to your door, which is nice. But I would have had to have turned up a few hours earlier to the airport than I needed to, or to the railway station than I needed to. I didn't want to do that. So there's the last scenery of the city. Um, two, two weeks already would have been enough, but uh, you know, it's, I wouldn't do it at least like the time I would have been. I'll do it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I do more of a tour if I can do anything, maybe tour around the place. And, like I say, stay, go to a place like Cadiz and stay for a, um, a few days and also go up to Northern Spain, I've never checked it out. So if I come back at any stage, which I may or may not do, uh, right at the moment my mindset is sort of fixated on, on Vietnam, I really love Vietnam. It's so, so, so much closer to Australia. Yeah. Just do without the hassles of travel. Once you get old, you don't, you don't want to go through all this crap. It's a good thing I researched the bus, I actually ended up getting, getting to use it, but uh, not, not coming here, but keep leaving, ironically enough. But uh, that's travel boy, it's full of surprises. Well, that plan of having the bus driver tell me 
I'm going to get it to you on Sunday. I wish it wasn't going to be too good because they, they change drivers. <laughs> so uh, that was absolutely useless. I have to tell the new driver. I hope she'll uh, inform me. What success with the, uh, the mission to get to uh, Santa Vista? Here it is, just as uh, Google Street View <laughs> says. So, uh, just got to head over there and get into the terminal, and it's very fresh at the moment. It's quite early in the morning, about 8 30 or so. so. But, um, yeah, I think it cost me about uh, 1.25 euros, a lot, lot less. And pretty fast, pretty efficient, and the, and the bus wasn't even busy, it wasn't even crowded, so. A good move all round. Just lucky the number 21 came up. Hope I have as much luck with the taxis in Madrid. That's going to be the, the telling thing. So, uh, yes, here we go. The beginning of the uh, semi return trip. It's one, another leg. It's the, it's the second of three legs, really, getting back to Oz. I just couldn't make out that board over there. It's just way too small a print for me. There is one here, but they've got this, these fluoros in front, which makes it even harder to read. I can just make it out, and I was told by a uh, presumably Japanese couple, or Asian anyway, I'm assuming they were maybe Japanese, but they said uh, number four, so they did help me out there, so. but I'll get a confirmation here, this is, looks like it's the... Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give, do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.